Howdy everyone, welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. It probably seems a little dark in this video. Hurricane Laura just hit the coast last night and it's not actually bad here in Houston. It's still sunny outside right now. But in a call with one of our clients this morning, they mentioned they had 120 substations affected last night during the storms. So the system's pretty weak and I think pretty much the entire city I'm in plus another one are out of power right now. I can't get any work done, so I figured I'd try and film a video and see if the lighting is good enough to turn out. I've got some windows open, so hopefully y'all can see this all right. But today I wanted to go into broadhead sharpening. I'm sure a lot of y'all already watched the Ranch Ferry, and he preaches that having a sharp broadhead increases the chances of a clean ethical kill. So I'm gonna go through this process of how I sharpen my broadheads. So this year I'm using the Magnus Stinger Buzz Cut. You can see it here. I've heard great things about this broadhead. Everyone says it's pretty sharp out of the box. I can vouch for that as I already cut myself once on it. But I'm gonna go ahead and make it even sharper. To sharpen these broadheads, I'm gonna be using the Stay Sharp system. For the Stinger, you need their gray sharpener. I also have the Magnus Hornet Serrazer, Razor, and I'm gonna be sharpening those as well, but I'll do a separate video for that because it uses their black sharpening jig here. So for this one, we're gonna stick with the Stinger Buzz Cut, and I'm gonna show you the process of how to sharpen it and get it to a nice mirrored polish and be able to get it to shaving sharp. What you're gonna need for this is your jig from Stay Sharp. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver, a Sharpie, a flat surface. I bought the kit from Stay Sharp where it comes with the plexiglass, so I have that. I recommend a strop. I bought this from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. I've got some green polishing compound here. And then for the sandpaper, you can kind of use whatever you really have and what's available, but you want to have pretty much somewhere from 300-ish to 1,000. I mean, if you want to, to get super polished, you can go all the way up to two or 3,000 if you want. But really what I've noticed works pretty well is I have a 320, a 400, and then I jump to 1,000. Usually I'd like a 600 or so in the middle, but all I had right now is the 400, and I think it works just fine. Also, if you have a broadhead that has serrations like these do don't laugh but i created this little jig of my own here with some scrap wood it's just a two by four and took a handsaw and cut out a piece you know cut an edge on each side and put a little string in the middle so i don't know if you can see that very well but so that'll be helpful in getting those serrations polished up as well so for this stinger there's a screw here on the edge. It's a Phillips screw so you want to go ahead and unscrew that and pop that out. Make sure you don't lose that screw otherwise you cannot put it back together. First thing you need to do is just pull this guy off. It's your main blade. You can pull it off. Some of these were pretty tight in there. So what I did is I had somebody hold the other end, or if you're by yourself, you could probably put it into some sort of press or something, but I had them hold this end. And what I did is I pulled outside on the two wings here and pulled away from them. And you can see like that. The next thing you do is there's a little piece. Let me zoom in here for you. So there's a little piece right here that you can pull up the first time to get it off, it's a little tougher. It kind of sticks to it. But once you have it off, it actually kind of falls off, which I don't really like. I was hoping it was magnetic of some sort so it would stay in there. But you can see you know, I put it back, and it just kind of falls off. So to get the bleeder blades off, you kind of just push against. I push the bleeders out towards the camera, and I pull this piece in towards me. And you can see it kind of just slides off there. Now that you have it disassembled, make sure you don't lose any pieces here or you won't be able to put it back together. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and 
start with the main blade. You really should be starting with the serrations first and then when you do the main blade it'll clean it up. But to do that you'll unscrew your jig. You need your flathead screwdriver just to get it open. Go ahead and slide your blade in there. And what you're looking for is about a quarter inch or so hanging out and you really want it to be straight. That was some of the issues that I've run into when doing this. If it's not you know, that straight, you're gonna kinda put a new angle on the bevel. This jig will change your degree a little bit, but it's not really a big deal. Tighten that back up to be pretty tight. Take your Sharpie. And I would go ahead and just mark along the edges here of your bevel. And go ahead and do that on both sides. Make sure you mark inside your serrations too, if you have serrations. Next is you're gonna take your little jig with the string in between it, and you wanna get some polishing compound. And to do this, I actually will take a flame to the edge of it and melt a little bit of the compound just to get it a little bit wet. And then I just kind of put it right over the string here. And you may have to do it a couple times to make sure you get your string coated in it. I have my string. I'm here in the jig. And I don't know if you can see the black lines, but basically you're gonna take your string here and just go away from the blade. If you go up into the blade, you're going to cut your string. So you just wanna do this and run it through a handful of times. You know, turn your string or the jig a little bit to make sure you get the sides and edges of it nicely. And you can kinda of see the Sharpie going away. You wanna make sure all the Sharpie inside those serrations are gone and you'll start to see it polish up real nicely. And this process may be a little time consuming, especially getting these serrations done, but it'll be worth getting this blade as sharp as possible so you make sure you get a good, clean, ethical kill. So once you think you have uh, the serrations pretty well polished up, the next thing you wanna do is, you know, we already put the broadhead here a quarter inch past the blade. We try to make it as even as possible. One thing to help with that is if you set it on the flat surface that you have, you can kind of look and see, you know, if it's sitting there flush, if it's touching, you know, both sides. And that's really what you want it to be. Otherwise, you're going to get a weird bevel when you start sharpening it. So I'm going to go ahead and take my flat surface and my 320 grit sandpaper. And again, with the Sharpie on here, this is kind of what this step is for is you'll take your jig and you'll just run it along a few times. And what you're trying to do is see if you're getting a good even sharpening. And there's two ways you can really look at this. You can look at your sandpaper if you're using a new piece of sandpaper and you'll definitely start to see a nice wear mark on the sandpaper. Or you can now look at your Sharpie and you can see it's I'm a little bit off here, whereas this side's getting a little bit more surface area than this side. And so I'm gonna adjust this a little bit to get it to try and even out a little bit. And so put a little bit of Sharpie on here and try that again. So that's much better. You can kind of see a, a good even wear on that Sharpie mark. So once you have that, you can go ahead and get started sharpening. And with this step, you can go forward and back on the sandpaper. Really on this first grit, you're probably gonna have to have some moderate pressure as you're doing this, just to make sure you're getting a nice good bevel on it. What I like to do also is I'll do about 20 back and forths on this side, then I'll flip and do 20 to make sure I'm getting an even bevel on both sides. It's good to keep a, a dirty towel around too, just to kind of clean off any of the sandpaper or, or little bits of metal that you're shaving off here. And so what you're looking for is to pretty much get all your Sharpie off 
And you'll be able to see when you reflect it off the light if you have a good smooth bevel as well. So that's kind of what you're looking for. All right, so that looks to be pretty good there. So we're gonna jump to the 400 here and go ahead and do the same process. Again, I like to do about 20 on each side and then maybe depending how it looks another 20 and then I kind of work my way down to 10 and then five. And as I'm doing this, I, I lighten my pressure up a little bit and not push as hard as I did on the 320 grit. All right, so we'll go ahead now and jump to the 1000. And again, at this point, you're gonna do a similar process. You're gonna be pretty light with your pressure. So at this point, I've got a pretty good mirrored surface on here. If you see any scratches in your mirrored surface, you can always go back one step and, and start over on the previous sandpaper just to make sure you get those out. What we're gonna do next is go to the leather strop. So again, I bought this on Amazon as well as this green compound. So I've already got a little compound on here. I'm gonna add a little bit. And to do that, I'm gonna get the compound hot again and get a Nice, good layer on here. What I've noticed is if you don't warm up this compound, when you start to try and go over your existing layer, it just scrapes everything off of it. So for this step, you only want to do a motion pulling backwards. You don't want to go forward. You'll cut into your leather strop and, and mess it up. I do something similar. I'll do about 10 to 20 on each side and kind of repeat it a few more times and work my way to about five on each side. And on the leather strop, you really don't have to put much pressure at all to get it the way you want it. So at this point, you should pretty much be shaving sharp here. So we'll see. I don't know if you can see all that uh, hair that it's picked off my arm there, but it's, it's very sharp. So at this point, that side is pretty good. So now we're going to move to the trailing edge here and sharpen that up. So we're just going to follow the exact same process as we did on the main blade. On this one, again, be careful because now you have your broadhead sticking back at you, so you really want to hold on the top of your jig here while you do this. All right, so that looks good on both sides. Switch to our 400 now. So now we'll switch to our 1000. Now we will take our leather strop again. Get on here, you're just moving backwards. So now we will go to the leading edge. So we'll switch to the 400. Go to the 1000 now. Go our strop. Now that this whole side is done, you'll take this out of your jig completely and you'll flip it to the other side, do the exact same thing on the other side. For the little bleeder blades, you do the exact same process. They're, it's a little bit thinner metal, so it'll actually go a little bit quicker. But you set it up a quarter inch outside. Just like that, you tighten it down and follow the exact same process. Once you do that, you'll put your broadhead together and you're ready to go.
one thing that Troy talks about a lot is you can't just do this at the beginning of the season and expect them to stay sharp throughout the entire season. So once you've done it, if you really haven't shot it into anything and you're just putting it in and out of your quiver, all you really need to do is you know, take it and maybe pull it out on your strop a little bit. I wouldn't even mess with the bleeder blades any more than you've already done. Maybe just touch up your main blade here on all three sides. Well, I guess it'd be, what, six sides? And put it back in your quiver. Maybe do it the weekend before you're going to go hunting. Now, if you're shooting it into a target, you may want to start the process over or start at the you know, 400, you don't really need to redo your angles again because you've already done them once. So I would just make sure, again, you keep your broadhead sharp because you want to make sure you make a good, clean, ethical kill. Hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll probably do another one on the Black Hornet Sarah Razor using the other jig here. That way you all can see how to do that one as well. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. I'll put the link for all this stuff in the description below. As always, I appreciate y'all tuning into this video today. Have a good one.